Hi everybody. So today I want to talk about another version of converting units that is really, really important, not only in physics, but really in a lot of science. And that's something called dimensional analysis. This comes into play when you have more than one unit, or often when you're dealing with time. Now, what, I, what do I mean by this? Let's say I wanted to know the area of this brick. Now, I wouldn't want to measure it in square meters. As you can see, this is what a square meter would be. You wouldn't be able to tell me how many square meters, but the square meter is the standard unit of area. So that would be difficult to say what this is. What I would more likely measure it in is square centimeters. So I can see it's about 10 centimeters by about 21 centimeters, so I could tell you probably how many square centimeters that is. But again, the square centimeter is not the standard unit of area, it's the square meter. So I'd have to convert square centimeters to square meters. And that is not a simple decimal movement. That may not work here. Equally, if I was talking about how fast a car goes, I typically would look at that on a speedometer and it might tell me I'm going 60 kilometers per hour, which again is an easy measurement to work with, but not the standard unit like the meter per second. So I'm going to do this thing called dimensional analysis. Now to do this, I need to use what are called conversion factors. In other words, multipliers that are sort of equal to each other. For example, that one kilogram is the same as 1,000 grams. That one meter is the same as 100 centimeters. That one minute is the same as 60 seconds. In other words, these things are equal. Now again, when you go through the examples, you'll see what I'm talking about here. So for example, let's start off with the idea that I have something that is in 80 square centimeters, or 80 centimeters squared. Now as I talked about converting before, the first letter is always the prefix, and the second is the base unit that I want to convert to. So I want to convert 80 square centimeters into square meters. And again, I can't simply decimal movement this. So here's how you always start. Since this is just one set of units, just square centimeters, I'm going to write it in a set of parentheses as 80 square centimeters over 1. Okay, Because that's, I'm, in other words, I'm sort of making it into a fraction. Now, I want to put in a conversion here. But I do not know how many square centimeters are in one square meter. Just don't know that off the top of my head. But I do know how many centimeters are in a meter. In order to do this properly, I need to get rid of centimeters and replace it with meters. Now, in terms of basic fractions, that means the centimeters must go on the bottom and the meters must go on the top. This will allow things to sort of cancel out. And as I said, I know that one meter is the same as 100 centimeters. Now the problem here is that when I go to sort of do some canceling here, there are two centimeters up on top, but one centimeter on the bottom. In other words, another way of saying 80 square centimeters, that's almost like saying 80 centimeters times centimeters. So from a perspective of canceling, I can cancel a centimeter down here, but only one of the centimeters up here. So there's sort of another centimeter still left. So it's kind of like I've gotten rid of the squared there. So what do I do? Well, I did this conversion once, I can do it again. So I'm going to make another parenthesis in the fraction. And again, I'm going to do one meter is 100 centimeters. I did it once, I can do it again. There's another thing, no rule that says I can't. Now, notice what that does is that cancels that other centimeters. So now there are no centimeters left. So once I've canceled all the things I want to get rid of, now I want to do a little multiplying. I multiply across the top and the bottom. So across the top, I have 80 times 1 meter times 1 meter. That gives me 80 meters squared. On the bottom, I have 1 times 100 times 100. That gives me 10,000. So I have 80 meters squared divided by 10,000. And when I divide that, that gives me 0 0.008 meters squared. So that's my answer. 80 
square centimeters is 0 0.008 square meters. And that's all there is to it. So whenever you have a squared or even a cube term, for example, if this was 80 centimeters cubed for volume, instead of doing that conversion one meter per 100 centimeters twice, I would do it three times. So whenever you have like a squared or a cube, it kind of tells you how many times you're going to do that conversion. Let's look at something different when we have more than one unit. So 60 kilometers per hour. Now, wow, what do I convert this into? Well, kilometers, if I get rid of the kilo, I have the base unit in meters. Now, hours, well, I just kind of have to know, because there's no real thing to hide here, know that I'm going to need to convert that into seconds. So I need to convert kilometers per hour into meters per second. That's what I have to do. Again, I can't do any decimal movements because there is no decimal movement between seconds and hours. So now I'm back to dimensional analysis. Okay, well, let's start off with our first parenthesis. 60 kilometers per hour is already at sort of its own fraction. So it is 60 kilometers over one hour. Don't make this mistake. I've seen people write 60 kilometers per hour over one. Don't do that. Do not do that. That is not correct. Okay, it's 60 kilometers over one hour. It's already a fraction. There are two conversions I have to make. I have to convert kilometers into meters and hours into seconds. So I pick one to start. Well, I'm going to start with the kilometers. So to convert this, I want kilometers on the bottom because I want it to cancel and I want to convert it into meters so that goes on top. Now I have to know what I'm doing here and I have to know that in this case one kilometer is 1,000 meters. That cancels my kilometers and meters are left so I'm good with that one. That's what I want is meters. Next comes hours. Hours is on the bottom of the first fraction so that means it needs to be on top of the other fraction. But I don't know off the top of my head how many seconds are in an hour, but I do know how many minutes are an hour. I know that one hour is 60 minutes. Okay, well, that can gets rid of my hours. That cancels out. But now I have this unit minute, which is still no good because I still want seconds. So I still got to do a little more dimensional analysis. So I need another parenthesis. Now in this case, I need minutes up here on top because I want it to cancel because it's on the bottom. And I want seconds down on the bottom. That's where they belong. And I know that one minute is 60 seconds. So that cancels the minutes out. And now I have my two units I'm looking for. Meters on top, seconds on the bottom. And everything else is canceled. So once I'm at that point, I can start multiplying. So across the top, I'm going to have 60 times 1,000 meters times 1 times 1. That gives me 60,000 meters. On the bottom, I have 1 times 1 times 60 times 60 seconds, which gives me 3,600 seconds. Which, by the way, there is 3,600 seconds in an hour, which is a shortcut you may want to use later on. Only thing left to do is take that 60,000 meters and divide by 3,600 seconds, and that gives me 16.7 meters per second. And that is what 60 kilometers per hour is in standard units for how fast something goes, which is the meter per second. And that's basically how dimensional analysis works. Let's say we've got something in cubic centimeters. Cubic centimeters is a measurement of volume. Centi is the prefix, which means meters cubed is where I want to go. The units aren't a fraction themselves, so my first parenthesis will be 200,000 centimeters cubed over 1, when there's not any fraction of the units. Now, in my next parenthesis, again, I want centimeters down here and meters here. Now, centimeters cubed is like saying centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. Again, I know that one meter is 100 centimeters. Okay, that gets rid of one of my centimeters. There were 
three of them because it's centimeters cubed, which means I'm going to need to do this conversion a total of three times. So I need two more, one meter, 100 centimeter, one meter, 100 centimeters. And that will cancel all of my centimeters. So my centimeter cubes are gone. Now I'm at the point where I can multiply across the top and the bottom. So I have 200,000 times one meter times one meter times one meter, which is 200,000 meters cubed. And then on the bottom, I have one times 100 times 100 times 100, which is one million. And that gives me 0 0.2 cubic meters. So 200,000 cubic centimeters is 0 0.2 cubic meters. Now again, you can do this with any set of units that you want. For example, 80 grams per minute. Well, what would you be measuring in grams per minute? Well, it's an interesting thing. In fluid mechanics, it's called mass flow rate. Okay, so the amount of mass of water, for example, that's flowing through a pipe every minute. Grams, not the standard unit. Remember, that's the kilogram. Minute, not the standard unit. That's the second. So this one has a fraction. So I start off with 80 grams over one minute, whenever I have that fraction. Now my first parenthesis, I decide what I want to work with first. I like to work with the top unit first. So I need to convert grams into kilograms. So that means grams have to be on the bottom because it's already on the top on the first one and kilograms are on the top here. So one kilogram is a thousand grams. Gets rid of my grams. I have kilogram, which is what I want. So I'm good with that one. Now for my next parenthesis, the minutes which need to be on top because they're on the bottom in the first parenthesis. I want to replace it with seconds. One minute is 60 seconds. Now my minutes cancel out and I have the second that I'm looking for. So I have my two units, kilograms and seconds. Time to multiply. Multiplying across the top, I have 80 times one kilogram times one. So that's 80 kilograms. On the bottom, I have one times a thousand times 60 seconds which is 60,000 seconds. So my last step is to divide 80 by 60,000, and that gives me 0 0.0013 kilograms per second. And that would be the mass flow rate there. Okay, so you can see how dimensional analysis can work. It really is a matter of setting up a set of parentheses with equalities and making sure you're always canceling properly. Okay, knowing what unit goes on top and what goes on bottom until you've canceled out the units you don't need and you're left with the units that you do need. This is a very, very useful thing and a very, very useful process in not only physics but in a lot of other sciences. So very important to understand. All right, see you next time.